Hey, it's Airely Brighton, and you're listening to The Show Radio. Welcome to The Show Radio, and now, here is your host, Andrew Alliance. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of The Show Radio. I am your host and editor-in-chief, Andrew Alliance. This episode 246 of the show radio, I'm I'm excited. You guys are listening. You guys are, are making me happy right now. I'm feeling real good right now. Whether you're listening from east, west, north, south, I really do appreciate it. Uh, reviews are, are greatly appreciated and welcomed. Please, if you could do that, that'd be fantastic. Head over to theshowradio.info for my archives and past shows. Subscribe and tell a friend. Tell a friend. Tell your neighbor. Tell your wife. Tell your spouse about the show. It's really appreciated. Previously on the show radio, I had Melissa Oakley, also known as Midwest Melly. And that's episode 245. You can find that at theshowradio.info, episode 245. She's over at getthatpapersun.com. And she also contributes to Universe Miami. Very cool, very awesome individual. I had a wonderful time speaking with her. Uh, This particular episode is going to be focusing on the vocalist, songwriter, extraordinaire, Airely Brighton. Uh, But before I get to that, the sponsors, dshowradio.info sponsors. First up, ProXPN. Head over to dshowradio.info forward slash ProXPN and use promo code S-H-O-R-A-M, S-H-O-R-A-M for 20% off the lifetime of your account. Next up is Audible. Audible has over 150 thousand plus audiobooks to choose from get your false get your false whatever that means get your first audiobook free with a 30-day trial sign up today at theshowradio.info forward slash audiobook last but not least bluehost built on open source technology and one of the world's largest providers of cloud-based online solutions the show radio is powered by bluehost sign up at theshowradio.info forward slash bluehost so Back to what I was saying, Erily Brighton, vocalist, songwriter, extraordinaire. Uh, she is amazing. I had a wonderful time uh, speaking with her in this particular episode, which is episode 246. If you don't know who she is and you play the game by Moon Studios called Ori and the Blind Forest, she is the lead vocalist on there. And uh, there's also some other amazing individuals on that particular game in terms of the score, if you will. But she is one of the individuals featured on there, and she's just amazing. You know, I had a wonderful conversation with her. She actually gave me a treat. I I made a special request during the show, and she kind of laughed about it. And um, she's she's pretty awesome, and she was a trooper, and she did it. And uh, I'm just so so happy and 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 excited for all the all the different things that's happening in in her life and things like that. She also has uh, she's working on an EP right now. And the current single out right now is called Unbroken. You can find that on iTunes. Uh, Anything that's related to her, whether it's SoundCloud, iTunes, her page and stuff like that, I'm going to feature. Make sure that's in the show notes uh, for you guys. And she also gave me a a track uh, of the the uh, the track that pretty much, you know, jump started her career uh, to who she is today. So uh, definitely fantastic uh, conversation with her. You know, I'm sure it's not the last time I'm going to speak with her. I just feel that, you know, in my uh, in my spirit, I guess that's lowercase s, if you will, for the theological people out there. But I, I definitely had a great time, you know, conversating with her. So definitely check that out. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed recording it and just waiting for the couple of weeks that it took to even get it. But uh, these things kind of, you know, give me, I guess, hope in, in this particular project, the show radio. But guys, thanks for your continued support. Uh, show us some love once it goes up and it goes out to the social medias. Definitely show us some love and let her know that you appreciate the gift as much as I do. So, guys, thanks for listening and enjoy this interview, Airely Brighton. Uh, so, right now, I have Airely Brighton. She is one of the most amazing voices you'll ever hear, uh, ever. Okay, uh, she's on the uh, the game that everyone's probably playing right now. The the nice game called Ori and the Blind Forest, and I'm so excited to have her. Uh, it's been <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks in the making, maybe yeah, give or take a couple of weeks, and and I'm excited to just be quiet and let her talk for the entire interview. That's that's my <laughs> goal. And uh, so you know, I have I have no notes. I seldom do this. I kind of have an idea of what I want to talk about. You know, obviously Ori and 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 her gift 
to the world. And, and I know <laughs> one of her missions uh, or, or, or the mission and maybe is to um, have a beautiful impact on somebody's life with the gift that she has. So I know that. Uh, so <laughs> welcome to the show, Airly Brighton. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. <laughs> yeah. So so let's talk. So take me, I think one of the easiest ways to actually just go into the conversation is take me on a, a, a trip with you to the last 72 hours of, of your life. Oh my goodness. The last 72 hours. Well, um, I've been balancing a bunch of different projects. The biggest thing I want to do right now is I'm putting out my first EP and a lot of it is based on cinematic type music. So I, I, one of the things I love about music is the evocative nature and it being able to convey this story that you can relate to. It's like almost, you know, when you read a book, you get to go to this alternate universe or live vicariously through somebody else. And I love to paint stories and pictures and uh, of, you know, just things that you can escape in and lose yourself in. So, um, I am currently just creating cinematic pop music <laughs> sweet sweet all right yeah. so so um so so who are you uh it's it's a very strange question um <laughs> and uh and I, I like the different answers i've gotten in the past from different individuals but um that that question really allows the individual to reflect on on who they are whether it's um you know psychologically emotionally theologically or whatever so um who are you as an individual today i am still that little girl looking up to the stars with hopes and dreams and wondering how she can make a difference in the world. And I still can remember being that little girl and hoping that all my wishes and dreams could come true. And I've never lost sight of that magic. And I'm, I'm on this quest in life to, to make those wishes come true. <laughs> Okay. All right. Very cool. I right, so I so saw this little girl. Where did she grow up? Where was she originally from? Parents and uh, you know what was that world like? I was originally. I grew up in, or I was born in Anaheim, California, and I lived in Orange County for a while. And then I think I was about seven or eight years old when I moved up to Sacramento, California, with my family. And um, you know, had a normal kid life, I guess. You know. What does that mean? Well, I went to school, did, you know, just, <laughs> I didn't really have too much going on other than, you know, I was wrapped up in, in books. I was actually, honestly, I was super socially awkward. Like I had no friends. Why? Um, How come? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I was an introvert. Uh, I lacked some serious self-confidence and I had all these things that I wanted to do with my life. Um, I actually wanted to go into acting for a long time and, I just could never relate to people. I don't know. It was, it was weird, but I consumed myself with books and music and, um, my cat, <laughs> I loved kind of like fantasy stuff. C.S. Lewis was one of my favorite authors. I loved, 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 loved Greek mythology. Okay. Um, yeah, just things that could really take me on a different path, like to make me forget about life, you know, and just, I, I felt like as a kid growing up, I was in this vortex of like, where am I going? What am I doing? And, you know, just life sucks. But, so, you know, I so think. So what happened there since, since we're just, since we're just chatting, since we're just <laughs> chatting. So, so, so what was going on with that? Um, I guess the lack of, of self-esteem, was that something that something took place for that? Or it's just like, not, you just not whatever. What, what was going you on know, with that? Truthfully, I don't know. I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, a lot of people in their lives on their journey encounter a moment in time where they compare themselves to other people or they try to feel and find where they fit best. And I think a lot of that emanated from me trying to live up to what I felt other people perceived me as or what other people expected me to be. And it was just, you know, never, never finding my own true self. You know, I was trying so hard to be other people that I never took a moment to relish and shine in the person that I was. Okay. What kind of other people? Um, kids at school. I don't know. You know, you see all the, the kids that were popular or successful or, you know, what maybe your parents, you want to improve or impress your parents or your family. You know, it's, it's just, it's kind of like this vicious cycle, this vortex of trying to, you know, one up yourself in a sense, you know, how can I, I don't know, validate myself. It's, 
you know, it's, it's just a, a, during the awkward teen years, I just didn't really know my place. And so I immersed myself in things that distracted me, which actually kind of worked in my favor. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, it was a, a very interesting time for me. I think growing up, it wasn't until I was a young adult in my early twenties that I realized, Hey, maybe I'm onto something. Mm. And what happened there? Because because uh, one of the things that pre chat separate chat completely we 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 mentioned that um, you know sometimes your your gift is birthed out of pain. I'm not saying that's what happened, but yeah. um, but sometimes it does for some individuals. Sometimes it's just oh wow, you know I didn't know that uh, this was really something I was great at. So now I need to um, explore and 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 you know create a craft around it or or, or share it with the world. So what happened with that? When did, what happened with you with that? You know, I don't think it was ever a an epiphany for me, so to speak, like, oh, I have to do music. You know, I'm going to change the world. It's it's not like that. I think there just came a moment in time where I got tired of, you know, feeling lost. I got tired of feeling like, man, I just, I'm never going to be good enough or whatever, like whatever the case may be, you know, whether it's just me going to work and, and doing a great job at work or, you know, having a bunch of friends or whatever. Like I just, I was living for other people. And that's why I felt so lost and just like, man, what is my life amounting to? And I remember I was working for the sheriff's department as a secretary after I graduated high school. I didn't go to college right away. And I worked there for about three and a half, four years and decided I wanted some adventure. So I figured, well, where else can I go that my bills are paid, but I get to travel the world while I join the army. And I became a combat air traffic controller. And I think through the military, that really made me strip myself down and really assess who am I? What am I doing in my life? Where am I going? And I knew that as hard as it was for me in boot camp, there were so many days that I just wanted to quit and throw in the towel. And I knew that if I gave up, then, okay, that's fine. You know, you can quit, but then where are you? You're back at square one and you have no direction. You just, you know, wasted the past three months of your life. And so... I just learned to really dig deep and I learned the, what is it? The importance of what I'm trying to think of how to say it. Um, take, take your time. I'm, I'm, we're, we're here for all night, all night. All night. <laughs> it's uh, it's well, just the importance of learning how to manage your time in the sense that it's okay to not have to take on the entire world at once. You know, like I'm, I've always been passionate and therefore I always look at and strive to work toward the bigger picture. But sometimes you can't just like throw yourself up on the mountain. You have to literally take it step by step and conserve, uh, what's it conserve all of your strength. So I learned to isolate moment for moment, hour by hour, day by day. And I knew that every moment counted. And so soon enough throughout boot camp, even though it was like the longest time of my life, it felt like it anyway. Oh, next thing I knew. For? Uh, the army or boot camp? We the entire army experience. How long were you in for? Um, it was just under three years, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was just insane because the next thing I knew, I looked up and it's like, oh wow, it's already like graduation for boot camp. And then you know you go to your flight school or you know your AIT, and then you I I happened to deploy to Iraq right after the um the AIT, and so. You know, that in itself was, again, I looked at everything as like my boot camp experience, you know, every day, just one day at a time. But it really occurred to me that I can do anything it is that I want to accomplish. And I have been incredibly blessed with the opportunity to excel in school. And I knew that I was smart. And I figured, you know, if I can get through this stuff, then why can't I try to make that work for what I really want to do? Cause I can always go back to school. But, um, after I got out of the military, I kind of like dabbled in music a little bit, but you know, it's like still needed that safety net of like, okay, well I have to be practical here. Let me go to school and study. And I actually started studying biochemistry for a while. I wanted to be a virologist and study viruses and try and help find cures for things. So that was kind of, that consumed my life for about a year. And, but I just, I still felt empty. I still felt like, man, I'm really missing something. Like I just have no life right now. I have nothing that really drives me. And so I 
just one day I was looking online on YouTube for music to study to, and I came across a composer who I absolutely loved his music. I fell in love with it. And I sent him a message and thanked him and I didn't think anything of it, you know? And then next thing I know, he writes me back and says, thank you. And we start talking. We talked for like 13 hours and that's a long time. It is a long time. And you know, and he is just like, you know, wow, you have so much in you. He's like, have you ever thought about singing? And I'm like, well, you know, I, I like to sing, but I'm not like a singer. And so he's like, okay, well, would you like to sing? And I was like, okay. So I sent him a demo, like a, a quick little demo. I recorded acapella from my phone. And what, what did that sound like? Um, I have a link actually. I can send you the link. It's on my SoundCloud. And okay, I want you to do something weird. Okay. What? I want you to sing the alphabet. Why? <laughs> because I, because the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter what you're saying. I think it's gonna sound fantastic. <laughs> Right now, right now. Yeah, like, um, yeah, right now. Why not? <laughs> this, this is how this, this is how we're gonna do it. Like, <laughs> if you sing the alphabet right now, I'm probably gonna start crying. Maybe. Okay, let's go for it. <laughs> okay. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z and then yeah. <laughs> that's that's insane. I got goosebumps. <laughs> this is crazy. This that's is so funny. This is crazy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. I'm, okay. I need to come back. I need to well, come that's back. the first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're, we're going for it. All right. So, um, uh, why C.S. Lewis? Why Greek mythology? I'm curious now. Um, why, why those guys you know, or, or I, people? I've always had just this fascination with mythology and specifically Greek mythology. I don't know what it is. I just, I've, I felt so drawn to it. Like it really resonates with me. And C.S. Lewis, I love the Chronicles of Narnia. Like I, I devoured that series over and over and over again. I just, I loved it. And it's just this magical place. I, I don't, I can't really say it was one particular thing. It just really resonated with me. It was like this far off land that I just, I completely understood it. Mm. And it was, it, you know, um, just the different stories of, of this, these, to me, it's like this magical, place i don't i don't really know <laughs> okay all right so so one of the questions i, I did want to ask you so what are your views uh, theologically do you have any particular views that you hold on to any worldview that you ascribe or subscribe to when it comes to that you know i i'm very spiritual um i do believe in heaven i do believe in god i believe in angels and and all that but I don't really know because to me there's a lot of conflicting things in different religions and and Ultimately, it all boils down for me just to have love in your heart and to do good and to give thanks where there's thanks. And if you have the capacity to make a difference, do it, you know, and um, everything else will fall into place. And always remember where you come from and, and just be grateful. Be be very grateful for what you have because it can always be taken away. Very cool. Very cool. So what what are the, some of the the trials you say you 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 had or? I don't know, depending on what the situation is, uh, of perfecting your craft as a vocalist um, I think, right now. Well, I'm definitely not perfected, <laughs> but I still have a lot of you know work to do. I think we all have journeys that we have to travel on, and, and I'm, I'm by no means anywhere near where I want to be. But I think so far, I the biggest obstacle has been me not getting in the way of myself. I think a lot of times for anybody that's not just singers, I think for, for anybody with a passion, it's so easy to get caught up again, like little airily. <laughs> um, it's so easy to compare yourself to everybody else. And, you know, and you set the bar so high for yourself and you're like, Oh, I have to be like this because this person's like that, or this person's doing this. So I have to do this, but it's, it's not true. I think that the number one thing I have to constantly remind myself is to love myself for who I am and to know that I have something unique to offer and nobody can take that away. Yes, there can be similar things, but somebody's only doing themselves an injustice if they try to emulate verbatim what I do because they're not honoring their own identity. And it's, 
you know, it's hard because there's so many people who are deserving and talented to, and who are nipping at my heels, trying to get to be where I'm at. And it's just, it kind of runs in tandem with remembering, you know, every day is a new day. Every project that you get could be your first and it could be your last. So you just cherish it for what it is and be grateful. And, you know, just remember that you just remember the reasons why you're doing what you're doing. Um, right. I mean, so just realistically, I don't think anybody can do what you do. You know? <laughs> let's, let's just keep it real. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think anybody can do what you do. Cause, cause have you, have you seriously, you know, like sat down and thought about the actual impact that you're making when everybody turns on Ari in the blind forest and listens to your voice? No, because I don't think it's just me. I mean, I'm well, like I mean, it's one not cog of the wheel. Well, uh, yeah, I understand that. I understand that. I, I get that. But, but this is what's happening right now, though. <laughs> That's the reality of it. I'm just, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's it's definitely ama- amazing because what happens is uh, typically depending on the situation, we get introduced to someone um, when something comes out, obviously, you know, depending mm-hmm. on what they release. Right, and, right. And I've never heard of any of your work until the game came out. So if I never played Ori, I would have never known. Yeah. So it was packaged, um, you know, obviously it was very well done, you know, from start to finish. Um, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so how did that, that happen? that you ended up working on, on that game and you've done trailers for movies, I'm sure. And, and other mm-hmm. works. So kind of highlight those things. And then we'll, we'll definitely talk about Ori and, and any other game projects you worked on. Well, I started out, like you said, doing the movie trailers and stuff. And this was when I was still living in Texas as going to school. And, um, you know, I, I slowly started buying equipment as I could afford it to, you know, sing and, and work with people remotely across the world. And, I had an opportunity to come to LA. So I did. And around that time, about three months after I moved to LA, there was somebody, a composer who contacted me and said, Hey, you know, I've been looking for a vocalist for a very, very long time. I can't remember the specific time frame, but it was a, about a year. And he's like, you know, I really think that your voice is the right fit for this project. Can we meet up for lunch? And I said, sure, why not? You know, so I went and met him and it was Gareth Coker, the composer for Ori. And he said, you know, I found your, your work on YouTube and on SoundCloud. And he's like, it's, it's incredible. And turns out we lived like 10 minutes away from each other. (laughs) So he's like, you know, I think that this is going to be a really good match. Are you interested? And I said, yeah, definitely. Let's tell me about it. Tell me what about that project. And he told me about Ori and the rest is history. So from there, I've been very fortunate to be exposed to other people because of Ori. You know, that's that's really a blessing. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely fantastic. So what about some of the other things that you've worked on um, in the past? Um, highlight those things. Um, so there's a game called Rift. I've done some music for Rift. There is a game. It's a smaller game. I don't remember who put it out, but it's called Arena of Fate. And I did some of the vocals for the, for that game. Let's see. I did a I was in a motion picture called Rwanda and Juliet. And that I think is still waiting for distribution, but that came out. It's a beautiful film. And let's see, I don't know if there's anything else I can really talk about right now, but I do have a lot of stuff in the works. That's fine. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, pretty much you can YouTube or Google and there's tons of trailer work that I've done or even just for libraries. And there's, there's many, 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 you know, composers who are extremely talented and gifted. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely link all your stuff to uh, the show notes and and things like that. So, so now you mentioned you don't, you know, feel that your your voice is is perfected. So, um, in terms of, you know, that particular gift, but when people say, well, you know, you have a great voice and stuff like that, do you still like wonder, are they really talking about me right now? Do you still you go through that? <laughs> I I don't know. To me, it's just really surreal. Because I've never stopped seeing myself as this little girl that's hungry for the world. You know, it's, I still see myself very much a believer and a dreamer and an achiever. And so I'm, I've been so caught up in trying to come make these things come to fruition. It's kind of like to, to like a, like a gopher stopping to peek up through the dirt. <laughs> it's like, holy crap, look how far I've really come. And so when people, talk about my voice. I mean, I, I know that that's me, 
And I know that's what I strive to do. But the fact that it hit home, it's kind of like that movie Hercules, Disney's Hercules, mm. where the little Phil guy, like he has this dream of being in the stars, in the constellations. And at the end of the movie, when it happens, he has this tear come down. It's kind of like, whoa, it's that realization that people are starting to see me as I saw myself as a little girl. And it's like, I, that's great, but I have to, I can't ever just be complacent or settle. Like there's so much more to strive for and aspire to. So it's like, it's kind of a really warm and fuzzy moment. But to me, it's like the work doesn't stop. I have so much more that I can perfect and harness. I've been very blessed with a virtuoso voice. Um, I can belt. I get hired a lot for like ethnic vocals and to do really just powerful, like battle cry warrior type music. And it's great, but it's like, imagine what I could do if I could really harness that even more and kind of bring that into more of a mainstream fusion. So that's kind of like what I'm working on right now. Okay. So what are you saying in some of these tracks and where is that coming from? Um, I make up my own languages. I don't know. It's, uh, I speak from the heart. There's really no definitive language per se. Like with Ori, I kind of like, I got lucky. I don't know if you knew this or not, but I wrote the language that's in the game where I helped to write it and they helped construct it. It was definitely a team effort, but essentially like during one of my recording sessions, they were like, Hey, kind of half jokingly, you don't voice act, do you? And I'm like, Oh sure. Yeah. Uh huh. Even though <laughs> I had never voice acted before in my life, but, um, I just, they turned the mic on and I just started speaking gibberish. And they're like, what? <laughs> and I got hired. And wow. so I helped to write the language. And to me, it's kind of like, I, I prefer that because a lot of times there are no words that can really convey what you feel. So instead of trying to find the right lyrics, why not just create something that's like this faux language. So really the art and beauty is in how you phrase and construct the melody. It's how you can kind of draw somebody in with just how it sounds versus what you're saying. Because at the end of the day, the essence is in the feeling, not with what's being said. Very cool. So you talked about you're working on the EP right now, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Um, how many tracks are you going to do with that? Um, you know, I'm still writing. I think right now we're up to six tracks. And it's probably going to, well, I'm going to keep writing. And then after I feel like I've gotten enough content, I'm going to go through and pick the ones that flow the best because I have a lot of ideas. So it'll probably be about five or six tracks. Okay. All right, cool. So what, what is the, uh, give me uh, like two crazy highlights you had when you were working on Ori and the Blind Forest. Two crazy highlights? Yeah. Mm, well, the first one I think was just, me being able to like discover that I can voice act and, and write languages like that people actually, you know, resonate with that. Because for me, it's kind of like just one of those random things like, Oh, you know, I'll just do it just for the sake of doing it. Never thought that people would actually think it was good. <laughs> so that was kind of a sudden realization for me. That was pretty cool. And, and yeah, go ahead. The second one, I think honestly was after everything was said and done, I think the most intrinsically, rewarding experience was not the actual experience of, of working on the project, but to see the fans, um, I was totally trolling people in Twitch. <laughs> really? I would, yeah. I would drop in to people's Twitch feeds and watch them play and to be able to see them interact and, and love the game. And then the joy on their faces when we announced that it was either me or Gareth, the composer or some of the other game devs. Um, it was just, really neat to be able to one-on-one -on -one interact with the fans and it, it totally made their day and I felt like a fairy godmother because I was handing out free downloads to people and they were just like oh my gosh nice. <laughs> that was really cool I think that that is actually my most favorite experience out of everything okay any words of wisdom for individuals who are whether you know starting the voice acting or 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 finding their voice and their gifts when it comes to, to singing, um, any words of wisdom for them or anyone, Abs any craft? Absolutely. Uh, walk in your own truth. Always, always, always stay true to yourself and know exactly with 100% clarity where you're headed, where you're going. Don't ever forget where you come from and keep, 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 keep at it. 
there have been times in my life where I was, I didn't know how I was going to pay my rent. I was scrounging for Taco Bell money just to eat some chicken soft tacos for dinner. And at the same time, that same week I was meeting with execs from Sony and you know, it's like nobody ever has to know the perils that you're going through. The only thing that matters is that you show up on time, that you follow through and that you deliver high quality work. And that's it. You maintain your professionalism and everything else will fall into place. Okay. So, so early, did I forget anything, anything that you want to promote, give out, uh, you know, anything that you want to share? I want to make sure I, I didn't forget anything while I was talking to you. Um, I can, I'll definitely send you the links for the free downloads for the game. We have like the main menu trailer and, or the main menu music, the trailer music. And, um, I can, I'll send you that so you can post all that. And then I can send you, if you want the link to the clip that started my entire career, that acapella. Okay, cool. Of course. Uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> definitely do that. Okay. So where can, where can they find you, connect with you? And, um, and after we, we've done that part, I just want to hang out with you for like uh, two seconds and, you know, kind of offline, but we'll still be on. But uh, it's something I want to, you know, ask you if you can do it for me. Of course. Um, um, this is kind of like selfish, that part. Uh, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, plugs, plugs and farewells and uh, where can everybody find you and your wonderful work? Um, okay. So I'm at facebook.com slash airly brighton, um, soundcloud.com slash airly brighton. And Twitter is at Early Brighton. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Early, you've been you've been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. You're listening to the Show Radio. Visit our blog at theshowradio.info. Subscribe and rate us on iTunes at the Show. Radio.